Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online. Coming up we have a very very interesting discussion with a very prominent sister, Sister Zahira Bam Ismail from South Africa. We'll be talking all about humanitarian services with her, her background and the many different organizations that she is involved with serving humanity worldwide. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Sister Zahira Bam Isma. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9720. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. We are very blessed to have with us on today's program, Sister, I want to make sure I get this name correct, Sister mm -hmm. Zahira Ismail. Welcome to the show, Sister. Shukran. As wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and thank you so much for having me on. And for the viewers out there, Sister Zahira is from South Africa. She has a very, very interesting personality. She's uh, the chairperson or the advisory chairperson on an organization called Caring Women's Forum. It's an organization all about relief work locally, nationally, and internationally. So stay tuned as we talk to Sister Zahira on her career, her profession, her background, and all these community work that she has been involved in. So Sister um, Zahira, tell us a little bit, what has motivated you to get involved in this sort of community work? It's twofold. Uh, I think um, the first motivation has always been our religion. I think we belong to a religion that constantly speaks about serving others, about doing for others and of being in service uh, to others. And I think that has been with me very strongly since my childhood. My um, father, who passed away quite a few years back, used to always take me out with him whenever he did any relief work. And I think, you know, the more we show our children, the more it becomes part of who we are. No matter what degrees we accomplish, it was always about how are we going to be of benefit to the people around us. And I think I see it as an obligation as a Muslim woman to be uh, in service to people around me. And Alhamdulillah, many of the women that I work with have the same views and the same attitude. And we belong to a community that is exceptionally giving. And I think this you'll find uh, Muslims throughout the world, not just in South Africa. There's always, it's a huge part of who we are and our identity. So this organization called Caring Women's Forum, what exactly you all do? So the organization started in 1995. Uh, it was just post-apartheid. Uh, so in South Africa, uh, people of all colors were able to now move into various areas. But also it meant that they moved out of communities that were predominantly either Indian or black or white. And they started mixing. This was started off to keep people from the Muslim faith together and to feel connected within the new communities that they move into. But what had happened was it started as a community get together to feel a sense of community bonding and has grown tremendously since then. So our work covers a number of um, aspects. 
starting off very briefly with bursaries. Um, we do food relief, we do pensioner support, we pay rent uh, and provide meals and food for a number of uh, people that are living on pension or in frail care. We are starting up a home, a respite shelter for single women and destitute women. We work a lot with gender-based violence and to provide relief and support. Um, we do, uh, we've got a cancer care support group where we provide support for people and for families who are ex going through cancer and chemo. We've also got a surgical team, a medical team uh, where we provide needs on those bases. And we've started early development centers, schools. Uh, we do an imam support development program, but our organization organization has moved away a lot from just handouts to doing skills development. So we're seeing quite an increase and a rise of single mums in our community. So we're trying to ensure that there is uh, sufficient skills development. We do a lot on setting up of businesses to be able to put people together where they need to be. And we try and help people in uh, these aspects. We do a lot of community support in various areas. So whether it comes to redeveloping the structures that they currently have, putting in extra bathrooms, whatever development is needed. Our organization has grown tremendously, but we work with a lot of the bigger organizations and also do a lot of impact work internationally with skills development, with bursaries. Um, we've actually put in place a Moacha project where families in South Africa support families in Palestine. And we're trying to roll this out in more places as well. So where, where are you based in South Africa? So we're based in Johannesburg uh, in South Africa. All the funds that come into our organization, every single fund comes in, every single fund goes out. So a lot of it, we don't, we all work out of our homes. Uh, we group and network the founding member that I mentioned to you prior to the start of the interview. Mm -hmm. We still have meetings at our house. And because of COVID, everything has now moved online. But we are based in Houghton in Johannesburg. You mentioned that you do some imam support activities. Mm -hmm. What is that exactly about? So we have a number of groups in our communities that have taken on looking after the imams. We find that in South Africa, the imams in various rural areas are so scattered, they're so far apart, they may not always be funds to help provide them with the adequate and necessary support that is needed. So there are imam support development programs in place and we help to fund this. So what they do is there's access to, they give them laptops, phones, there's access to online lectures, online training, continuous stimulation of work so that they're not feeling isolated or alone. There's a support with medical aid so that they have access to private health care. There's support with extra funding to supplement their income as well. We try and ensure that people in various areas are not feeling isolated and yet feel connected to everyone and, and to the global world at the same time. No, I really admire that because there are not many organizations in the world that have an imam support program and hence you have a lot of problems that imams face when they have health issues or when they probably have financial issues so i think you guys are doing a phenomenal job when it comes to um that area and I think if we think about it, the imams are probably the imams, the mu'adhins, our teachers, the mu'alims. Those are the people that should be the ones that we are revering the most, looking after the most, giving the most amount of respect to, because those are the ones that are teaching our children and teaching the communities about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't put a lot of effort into ensuring that they are okay, we're falling short. And that's where we're all going to be answerable. So I see that you're also a businesswoman. What business are you involved in? So um, I'm actually a speech and hearing therapist by profession. Mm -hmm. So um, an audiologist. So I do. I've got my practices that run, but I'm also in the medical cannabis industry. Uh, we provide pharmaceutical grade medical cannabis. Uh, we've got one of the companies running in South Africa and currently in cultivation as well. Oh, that is interesting. That's interesting. You wear many hats and you are involved i can just imagine how do you find this time as a married person i, I you know the first thing i do every morning is i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for barakah in my time and i think that honestly is the only way i can answer it 
And I think we're also blessed to have phenomenal support networks around us. I think as women, we're often afraid to reach out and to ask for help or to say we need a bit of help. And they reach, there comes a point in time when you realize to be able to do what you need to do, it's okay to ask for help. It doesn't mean you failed or you've fallen short, but it's okay to be able to get the help that we need. Um, and as women, there's only so much that we can do and we need to go easy on ourselves. So don't be afraid to ask for help. But the one thing is always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and he'll always send the right people there. The one um, day I was doing a community visit to, to a few of the widows and I had my mom in the car with me and we were running late and I said to her, I don't even know how I'm going to get home and get supper onto the table. I haven't done anything. I haven't prepared and my family will be home soon. And on the way, I just <coughs> made a dua and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just help me out, please. I Just give me some time or help me out in some way. And what was amazing is by the time I got home, there was a pot of food on my table and I called this friend to say, there's a pot of food here. And she said, I thought about you. I was making this today and I just thought, let me send something over for you. So never, ever falter on how much faith you put in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him for anything and everything you want because he puts that barakah in your time. And when you're in his service, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens doors and he'll always put the right people around you to help you. And while I say this, I, ha I would be completely remiss to tell you that this is only my work. I work with a phenomenal, phenomenal team of women. We come from a phenomenal community and we belong to phenomenal people who are always willing to lend that extra hand, to, be, to go out and do the extra visits for us, to be able to oversee things. So this is definitely not just one person. It's an entire group of people who participate in this. SubhanAllah. So you are there busy caring for the people and Allah just provided the food for you at home. Alhamdulillah. You see, Allah Alhamdulillah. has his ways of doing things. So, Sister Zahira, I see that you are also involved in many other organizations like um, Islam Char Charity Network and Crescent Heaven Children's Home, etc. But right now, we have already been speaking for approximately 10 to 12 minutes. So, we got to go on a short break. When we come back, we will continue our conversation a little more on your involvement with these other organizations and other charitable work that you are involved in. All right. So to our viewers out there, stay tuned as we continue this conversation after the short break with Sister Zahira. Very interesting personality, a mother, a wife, but yet a community leader a person who makes a lot of time to serve the community and humanity internationally. Stay tuned when we come back. We'll continue, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, sallallahu Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran. Thirty dollars. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it's a pleasure to have with us on this program Sister Zahira Ismail. Welcome back to the show, Sister. Shukran, thank you so much. And again, for viewers out there who have just tuned in, Sister Zahira is a world-renowned personality in her humanitarian services. She does a lot of relief work 
with a lot of sisters from different groups. She's the advisory chairperson on Caring Women's Forum, an organization there in Johannesburg, South Africa. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Sister Zahira. Yes, Sister Zahira, so let us know a little bit about your TV background, the program that you <laughs> are involved in on television. What about that? So I had actually started my TV uh, background while I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And I was in a very um, a television magazine program yeah. for quite a few years through my entire high school. I then had stopped that. Um, after I'd gotten married, I was on a community radio station. And subsequent to that, had got involved with ITV, which is the Islam TV in South Africa. And I had my own show. Uh, the show revolved around... Um, entrepreneurs and you know helping out starting up of small businesses and uh, basically it was a form of showing the skills that were available within the community helping to boost a lot of the women's businesses and just growing their profiles and also talking mm -hmm. about certain skills that would be required and the advice that they would give mm -hmm. to other women and it was a wonderful show i think i've mm -hmm. met some of the most phenomenal people Due to family commitments, health commitments, and other work commitments, I had to pause that for a while. There are, have been plans to go back, but inshallah, all at its right time. So what was the name of that show? It was called I Trends. So it was whatever was trending at that moment, we were showcasing it. Oh, I Trend. Yeah? Interesting, yes. interesting. Now, these are the other organizations that you are involved in, like uh, Islam Charity Network. What is this organization all about? So the Islam Charity Network started uh, to actually ensure that there was less duplication with work being done. In mm -hmm. South Africa, we have a large number of Muslim organizations that are working locally and, uh, and internationally organizations that really give up themselves um, all over. And what we thought of doing was saying that if we uh, made a group where group organizations could network, could be able to lean on each other, would be able to see what the other organization was doing, not only would we be able to share our skills and resources, but we would also be able to reach a larger number of people to ensure, while we're ensuring no duplication of services. So the Islam Charity Network uh, was actually started, uh, one of the founders is actually a uh, my very uh, dear cousin and friend Zakir Baum and uh, he's the original founder of the organization and what it did was it uh, brought all the Muslim organizations into one group where a lot of collaboration is taking place and Alhamdulillah has been exceptionally successful interesting and the organization the children's home it's called what children's uh, Crescent Haven children's home what so sort of services Crescent you offer there so Crescent Haven Children's Home is something that has been exceptionally close to my heart since I've been in school. That was one of the homes that my dad was a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, he helped for many years. And I think because we were involved in it from such a young age, it was always something that stayed very close to our heart. It's a home that caters for uh, Muslim children who have either been destitute or vulnerable, abandoned or orphaned, and they are raised in these homes. And it's a wonderful, wonderful home. And the one thing I always remember my dad saying is, always provide a service that you yourself would use. Do not give them food that you yourself would not eat. Do not give them clothes that you yourself would not use. And Alhamdulillah, the organization is still running. At the moment, our, our organization, the Caring Women Forum, lends support whenever is needed for eat clothes, for stationery, for whatever is required from them. But it's a phenomenally run organization. Wow, I can just imagine. These things really take a lot of time just to get involved, all the meetings, all the services, and all the different activities. You are really blessed to be fortunate with the time, the barakat in your time, to be able to get involved in these sort of services, in these sort of uh, community services for children, for adults, for ladies, for men, well, people at large. Do you have non-Muslims also that get involved in these activities or are these homes open for non-Muslims also? What are some of these areas of services you have or these organizations do for non-Muslims? So 
all our organizations are run on an Islamic ethos and basis, mm-hmm. but is open for people of all faiths, people mm-hmm. of all races. So we never separate when uh, help is needed. We there and we provide a service as a Muslim community and as Muslim organizations, but to everyone that needs it. So from our feeding mm-hmm. schemes to our relief aid, uh, that goes out into various areas. We've got a special needs center that we run for adults and children with disabilities. Again, that was came about as a need for within our Muslim community, as there were so many organizations that catered for people from other religions, but no one that catered for Muslim community. And that one started on that. But if you look at most of the organizations within South Africa, our relief work goes across and it's open to all races and all religions. And we see it as a form of our dawah work to be able to show people what Islam is. So what do you exactly do with uh, Madrasa Ehsan? What goes on with that organization? That's our special needs center. It stands for the Islamic Holistic School for Alternative Needs. Mm. So how that started was um, one of my cousin's sons has cerebral palsy. And she called me the one evening crying, saying to me, her son cannot be the only Muslim child here in Johannesburg that has a disability. Where are all the other Muslim children going? Because she Mm -hmm. had sent her son to another school and there was an issue of halal and haram and she was worried about what he was eating at school. And she said, there has to be something. So we got together, um, we chatted to one of our uncles who is in the Jamiyat al-Ulama and he did a program on his show and he tried to ascertain the needs within the community. And we called up a first meeting and we found quite a few parents came to this meeting and said, there has been nothing catered for our children. And this is how the center started in 20, uh, in 2007. And we started that organization and Alhamdulillah, it's grown. We provide a service to for children and for adults with disabilities. And the disabilities range from cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, autism. And we try to do the best that we can for them. So all these organizations, Sister Zahira, that you guys offer all these services and, uh, I mean, assistance to people of all different levels. Technically, you have covered all ages, all levels, all races, all religions. How do you get the funding to finance these activities? So, Alhamdulillah, I think, you know, we are very, very blessed. We come from a community uh, that is exceptionally giving. I think people know our reputations when it comes to the work that we do. They understand that there's complete transparency for every fund that comes in and every fund that goes out. And people are comfortable giving it to us because they understand that where we will be utilizing it. Um, So we we actually used to raise funds. Now we've even stopped raising funds. Alhamdulillah, we've got a very giving community. And all it takes is one or two phone calls to the members within our community to say, this is what's happening at the moment. And Alhamdulillah, the funds do come in. So we are very, very blessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us very generous benefactors who do provide the funds that we need. And inevitably, whenever there is a project that comes up, the funds are always available. Wow, I think... That in itself is a very unique blessing because a lot of organizations in America, in America, in other countries, they got to be raising funds all the time to be able to Mm -hmm. facilitate these kind of organizations. But you are blessed with people there that um, just come up and assist when there is the need. So tell us again, we, we got to conclude the program. You know, we've already been speaking for 10 minutes again on this second segment. What would you like to share with our viewers before we conclude? Just always remind yourself of your naya, your intention of why you're starting anything. Never discount the amount that you can do. I think I meet so many people all the time who often say, oh, I'll never be able to do this or that. And I live in a small place. Wherever you are watching this, It doesn't matter. You can do something every day to impact the lives of people around you. We start with people within our own homes, our neighbors, checking if they find, checking if somebody has a plate of food on their table, being sensitive to the needs of others and making dua constantly that Allah always keeps us 
there when people need us. And I think to understand that if we are in the service of others, we won't ever be in need of anyone else except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for everything, whether it's a parking spot that you need when you're driving to a mall or whether it's that food on your home table, Allah will always send the right people to your doorstep to hear it. And specifically to the women who are watching this, no matter where you are, I think as women, we always experience the same things. But understand that no matter what you go through every single day, no matter how much it takes out of you, the fact that you're doing for your family, that you're doing for your children, when you're wiping your tears on that prayer mat, when you wake up and you still show a good face to everyone, no matter how much you carry within you, understand that even if you don't get a thank you wherever you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you, He acknowledges you, and He has put you here, so He sees the value in you. And if you understand your value as a Muslim woman, and you understand that Jannah lies at your feet, understand the legacy of Muslim women we come from, you will understand how proud you should be to be a Muslim woman. Well, sister, that was well said. And we are very blessed to have had you with us on this program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless you, guide you, protect you, and give you the iman and uh, health and strength and ability to continue in this path, fi sabilillah, in doing all these righteous deeds. Coming up, we need you to stay tuned with this very important discussion between myself and brother Yasin Thiba from Johannesburg, South Africa. A man with a lot of experience, a lot of community services. He has a private company called Vision Tactical, offering security services. He's a chairperson of Muslim Association of South Africa. So stay tuned as we continue the conversation with a very, very powerful humanitarian personality from South Africa. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaka Jaria, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or Fi Sabilillah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954 986 0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Allah is the creator of different faces Allah is the creator of all races Allahu 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 Allah Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24/7 online We are very fortunate to have with us on our program today Brother Yasin Thiba. Did I have that correct, Brother Yasin? Yasin Thiba. Yasin uh, Thiba. Good. So, welcome to the show, Brother Yasin. And for our viewers out there, Brother Yasin is from South Africa. He has a very interesting background. And I am sure that you viewers out there would definitely be motivated after hearing his experience and the kind of community services that he offers and the organization that he works with and the kind of things that he does for the people in South Africa. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Brother Yassin. So Brother Yassin, tell us a little bit about what motivated you to get involved with this organization called Muslim Association of South Africa. Uh, alhamdulillah, um, we've always had the opportunity um, from from a, from an early uh, childhood uh, going to a going to a Muslim school. Um, I've always had the opportunity to get involved in community projects, mm -hmm. get involved in community initiatives, and um, there's no one particular particular thing that I think uh, triggered getting involved in anything. I think it's just that uh, urge to um, help people, be with people, assist people. Uh, and it probably comes from from uh, grandparents or foundation, um, but also from our teachers. You know, uh, uh, Shukar, we went to schools where we were 
uh, advised and tutored by a lot of the ulama alims mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That, that, that taught us that whether you're a student or whether you're a teacher, you have to give back to the community. You have to assist the, uh, assist the community. And I've carried that, alhamdulillah, through the years. Um, it was uh, late last year when, uh, uh, so, sorry, early last year when we decided that the Muslim Association of South Africa is a group that we should register and, and, and get more involved in not just our local community in Johannesburg, but get involved in social projects throughout the country and benefit Mm -hmm. uh, not just our Muslim community, but benefit through the networks of our Muslim community, benefit South Africans and where we can assist internationally via other organizations, assist and make an impact um, uh, under the Muslim banner. So what kind of services do you guys offer in this organization? Uh, I mean, again, you know, we 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 don't uh, particularly ring fence any project. Uh, it's where there is a need. We try and we try and uh, get involved. Um, but we, our 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 strategic uh, uh, aims is to see to emergency relief. I think I think that's where a lot of our passion, uh, personal, uh, our some of our guys, there's, there's a personal passion to get involved. So there's been a number of crises in the, that we've seen uh, uh, through the past few months. Uh, getting involved uh, with, I saw you did a profile with Kariziar Patel recently, getting involved with Kariziar Patel mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. some international uh, relief projects that is, that is done. But again, it comes from passion. It comes from a group of volunteers that are willing to get involved, get down on, uh, get down on the ground um, and assist people, assist, you, assist uh, 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 um, some of our, some of our uh, communities. Um, I think the idea is that no matter what business you're in, no matter what field, no matter what profession you are, um, we've all got a responsibility to show our humanity. And um, for that reason, we try, we try and, we try and uh, be there when and where, uh, and where we are needed. So um, as a chairman of this organization, I know you would have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of stress, a lot of leadership um extra duties that's the burden that comes to the president and the chairman of any organization how do you guys finance this organization to be able to serve people worldwide uh, the muslim association of south africa is a registered non-profit organization in south africa mm-hmm. um, all our proceeds come from donors we believe in a hundred percent donor policy all our staff, if I may call it, are all volunteers. So there's no staff salaries. Um, everyone that's involved in the organization is uh, gets involved for, uh, voluntary. Um, Alhamdulillah, we've got an excellent team. So managing people, managing uh, managing projects become easier when you have the right team behind you, when you've got that passion behind you. And uh, Shukar, you know, again, the ulama are there to uh, advise us, to guide us and running an organization with the name Muslim Association of South Africa comes with a lot of responsibility. Um, but uh, Alhamdulillah, the, the, the advice in the, in the community that we, that we work within um, has been absolutely supportive. And uh, uh, when, you, when, you, when you're driven by passion and that urge to assist people and you've got the right team behind you, um, social work becomes social. Uh, and, 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 and that's just what we want to do to get more of our youth involved. We want to, we want to encourage youth to get involved. We want to encourage and create a platform for people uh, to help their communities. But also, it mustn't be something that they dread. It's very important that we maintain that element of uh, keeping it social, not only so that we can benefit uh, 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 the uh, benefit people that need, but also so that we can we can benefit from it by bringing our community together and mm-hmm. getting the youth involved. So I saw in your bio that you guys, uh, MSA, has donated millions of rinds to PPEs. What is that about? Um, you know, South Africa is a country that um, um, there's no there's no getting around the fact that uh, we are. We are uh, very, very, very challenged when it comes to our healthcare systems. Um, you know, the scars have always been there, and I think during this pandemic, those scars are now wide open, and and, and we are, we are actually bleeding. Our healthcare system is falling to pieces. We 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 realize that 
uh, our economy won't be able to take the brunt of a global pandemic. So uh, it was important for us to support uh, not just our Muslim community, but get involved in the local hospitals, get involved with the Department of Health in uh, our provincial government and our national government, and uh, basically fund some of the projects that the government was uh, doing. Mm -hmm. We immediately realized where that um, uh, PPE, uh, being, being uh, N95 masks, being uh, uh, simple things like sanitizing some of, the, some of the medical facilities, there was an urgent shortage. And we immediately called on our donors to assist us. And Alhamdulillah, we were able to uh, uh, distribute uh, critical uh, 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 aid to those facilities so that they could become operational again. Oh, that is that is fantastic. I think that's really, really phenomenal. That's a, a, a powerful contribution that you all have done um, over the past few months, especially in this time of pande the pandemic. Yeah, I would call it or the pandemic days. Um, I was checking out again your background and your lifestyle and the kind of things that you're involved in. So it seems as though you really love to take care of people. You just like taking care of people and doing humanitarian services. That's a, a special gift that Allah has chosen you for. Alhamdulillah, I, uh, I'm, I think I will be eternally grateful uh, that I am given the opportunity to help people every day. Um, there is certain lessons in the 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 the, the satisfaction that not only myself, but I think the satisfaction that some of my uh, business partners, some of my colleagues, some of my closest circle of friends, the satisfaction that we find when we are uh, assisting people, seeing people smile again, or mm -hmm. meeting people who have lost loved ones, and we are able to take care of the immediate. Uh, janaza needs, burial needs, uh, especially at this time. Um, I think the satisfaction and the inner content that we get, um, Alhamdulillah, that that we realize that there isn't um, anything that can that can give us that that sort of contentment. Um, so Alhamdulillah, I make I make shukar every day. We we are thankful every day. I think the best way to show that appreciation and show that contentment is to continue doing more for our community and getting more and more people to us. So do you guys do fundraising or your donors just donate when there is the need? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, will, it will vary from project to project. Uh, there, is, there is certain projects. At the moment, we know that we are trying to support home-based care where a number of our community members uh, have been, have been uh, tested positive and we're trying to support them at home. So uh, the need for oxygen concentrators is something that uh, we, are, we are trying to push with. Um, and that's something that we will go on a public uh, 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 charity drive uh, to collect funds so that we can purchase a number of oxygen concentrators and get oxygen con concentrators in homes, working with local doctors. Um, and then Alhamdulillah, there's other campaigns where uh, once we're on the ground and we start distributing, for example, food hampers, we have a number of people that want to join us in the distribution. So we get the volunteers and people that want to distribute in, uh, in, 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 in produce, for, be it uh, maize, milli meal, or uh, rice or grocery items. And um, uh, again, I think, I think our association and our group is a collective of um, just uh, uh, people that want to uh, want to want to donate and, and and good active citizens that volunteer towards helping people and um, it's a combination that gels well that, uh, that 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 clicks and and we are able to get into areas where we can then support so it's a mixture of a number of campaigns it just depends on which projects we we, we are getting involved in good well we have already been talking for approximately 10 to 12 minutes so we gotta go on a short break and then when we come back, Brother Yassin, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about your vision tactical operation. I am fascinated with that. I just love the idea. What motivated you to get involved with that? What are some of the kind of services that you all offer with this company or this business? The vision tactical services. So to our viewers out there, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Brother Yassin 
Thiba from South Africa, and we're talking to him a little bit about uh, the organization of which he is a chairman and the president, Muslim Association of South Africa. And for those of you who have just tuned in after the short break, we want to discuss a little bit about his uh, tactical vision or his vision tactical services a private business or company that he has and the kind of services that they have offered and that they offer to the people in South Africa. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Again, it's a pleasure to have with us on the program Brother Yasin Thiba from Johannesburg, South Africa. And those of you who have just tuned in, Brother Yassin has a very interesting background. He's a chairperson of the Muslim Association of South Africa, and he also runs a private business called uh, Vision Tactical. So welcome back to the show, Brother Yassin. Thank you. Now, as we were saying before we went on the break, what is Vision Tactical about? Vision Tactical is a private security company. Um, I think if you search Johannesburg, uh, the number one articles on your Google search will be the high crime rate in Johannesburg and in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, a few years back, um, I, I mean, I've always been involved in um, security in the local uh, police station and the forums created around the local police station in the neighborhood watches. Um, but I think so. Have you been a police officer? I haven't been a police officer, uh, <laughs> but I've, be, I've 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 worked very very closely with the with the police in the past, okay. and I continue to work very 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 close with the police um, on the ground. It's something that I still enjoy. So very often um, there's there's arrests that that need to be made, and I'm on the ground with the team, ensuring that we actively get involved with the police. So I've done a lot of training with the police in a number of departments as well. Um, but again, Shukar, through the through the company Vision Tactical, we are able. To, we were we we've worked a lot with different departments, up to national officers. In uh, uh, gotten involved in a number of events with the police, and um, ultimately that has resulted in us uh, getting involved in more more and more involved in security. And we saw a little gap um, in the market uh, that. We needed to firstly uh, secure our community and in South Africa, the best vehicle to secure communities, um, but also we needed to earn a living. So we started a private security company and Shukar, we've grown from strength to strength. Alhamdulillah, currently we are, uh, are rolling out our national uh, footprint. We've started offices in Cape Town and Durban as well. And um, Shukar, the business is growing. But uh, through these past few months with the global pandemic, um, the company Vision Tactical has also allowed us to get in and support communities and assist communities where we wouldn't ordinarily be able to help. 
um, we uh, created or initiated a COVID unit, a special unit that um, is completely uh, funded by our company, but is there to assist with uh, advising businesses, advising uh, public spaces like mosques, schools, hospitals, um, and also people at home, just ordinary, ordinary people at home on what precautions they should be taking, creating awareness campaigns to make people more aware of COVID. Um, and and, and, and uh, through that, uh, Shukar, I can say that Vision Tactical has also been an instrument in uh, helping our community, uh, not just in Johannesburg, but nationally. Oh, I think that is uh, phenomenal. I mean, that's a fantastic idea because there is always need for um, security services. And with the crime situation in South Africa, well, I mean, in many countries you got crime, but as you rightly said, South Africa has a big rise in crime. And um, there would definitely be a lot of need for your security services at events and Islamic centers and regular businesses, etc. So your company um, offers services to all kind of businesses or is it only uh, zoomed around Muslims? Uh, to all kinds of businesses, we've got a client base of multi, multi-religious, uh, multi communities. Um, we 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 offer our services to to, to companies. We are a South African private company, um, and I must say a, pr- a very proudly South African company. We 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 take pride that we have uh, originated in South Africa, grown our business in South Africa. Mm-hmm. We try and uh, employ South Africans. And again, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of debate around whether. The high crime rate is a result of unemployment, or is unemployment, um, uh, or, or is crime killing the economy, and that's why there's unemployment. So mm. I mean, it's, it's it's this it's this it's this debate that's going on and on. But I mean, the best way to do it, of course, is to fight crime, and uh, through our social work, is to assist in cre- and and and, and uh, assist the needy, show that um, uh, compassion and humanity, so that. Uh, ultimately, that will result in goodwill within our communities and, and, and ultimately safeguard our different communities. So, um, uh, 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 so your security is- officers, your security officers, are they, wh- wh- where do they get their training from? Um, there's a number of a number of training schools that uh, that, that that they will need to uh, become security guards. So there's minimum requirements that they have to go through, the minimum courses that they have to go through. But again, it depends on their qualifications. So if they're an armed reaction officer, they would need competency in certain firearms. If they mm-hmm. are a, a guard working at a residential block, they would need certain training. And there is a number of schools. There's literally thousands of schools in South Africa that. That, that cater for training. South Africans, the South African security industry is the largest um, uh, uh, employer of the South African population with over 800,000 uh, security guards employed, 400,000 actively involved in the industry. The South African private security industry is larger than the South African police force currently. Wow, that is interesting. Maybe, maybe you need to go and give some advice to some of those other countries where they have crime uh, problems and where crime is a big, big, big problem because South Africans got a living example of the crime rate there in South Africa and how you guys handle crime is really, really fantastic. Uh, you know, we we, 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 uh, we can't say that we're winning our war on crime. Unfortunately, there is still so many murders that take place every day. There is still so much of violence. There is so much of um, incidences that we just can't get our hands on. Um, uh, within our Muslim community, there's been a spate of uh, kidnappings of business people. And those are issues that um, put us on a back foot. So, unfortunately, we're not in a position to be advising anyone <laughs> else at this I but know. Um, again, you know, our, our our challenges are completely different. We we we're working in a completely different environment, and um, we find ourselves in a time where 
Um, although although we've uh, banished the shackles of apartheid 25 years ago, we're still dealing with some of those challenges and, 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 and rising as a uh, democratic uh, nation. But um, clearly, those challenges are still there, and uh, crime is one of those major issues. Right. And I know you guys got your hands filled. You got your hands filled with crime across there. But, you know, it's people like you and... Uh, companies like yours, Vision Tactical, the people like you would have a lot of experience and a lot of advice to offer if the need comes to be in other countries and for other people. But before we conclude the program, Brother Yassin, you know, I must ask you this question for the benefit of our viewers worldwide. South Africans have been really blessed, and I say this because I have a lot of South African friends I have studied with a lot of South Africans. I've been to South Africa a couple of times. And what I have noticed, though, is that South Africans are very generous people, generally speaking. Generally speaking, I have seen that from my personal experience. And I'm sure that that, that kind of generosity does help... Um, your organization, Muslim Association of South Africa, and many other charitable organizations, it definitely helps you guys a great deal because it seems as though it seems as though you guys don't have to go begging for for financial help to help other people, but you probably just gotta motivate people to support you. Could you uh, could you share a little bit on that? What really motivates and what is behind South Africans being so generous in helping organizations that serve humanity? Alhamdulillah, um, I, think, I think there's no one thing that we can attribute uh, people's blessings or people's generosity to. I think as a South African community, um, there, is, there is this urge to help because uh, Shuka, the South African Muslim community is blessed in the sense that um, we've, 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 we, we, we are generally a community that has um, evolved in our businesses. We have, we have a number of successful business people in our communities um, mm -hmm. and, and, and our communities generally have, have been successful business people. Um, and, 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 and with that, um, Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of blessing and barka that comes from that. And then again, our madrasas, our ulama, um, that network of madrasas, Islamic education, keeping the communities together, all that ultimately results in networking of people. Um, and I think in recent months, we've seen a, uh, a, a, a major growth in the number of Muslim organizations being registered, non-profit organizations being registered, from, from, from simple family trust doing charitable work or housewives doing charitable work, registering organizations. And all that results in mobilizing more people, mobilizing family, fathers encouraging their children, registering a trust fund, registering a uh, charity organization. So just so that their children can get involved and create a legacy, um, not only for for that family, but for that community. And that community helps uh, uh, that suburb, and that suburb helps that city, and that city helps the nation. So Alhamdulillah, there's been this uh, mobilization of Muslim charity organizations and Muslim, um, uh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm almost reluctant to call it a movement, but there has been a movement of people uh, wanting to help people through this pandemic. Uh, the minute the lockdown was announced, Alhamdulillah, there were Muslims that were able to distribute literally thousands and thousands of hampers every day to get food to people because we knew people were out of jobs, firstly. South Africa has probably the highest crime rate um, uh, 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 in our region. And we knew that the challenges that the South African population would face um, would be like no other. And because the South African Muslim community mobilized, we were able to get food in. Uh, initially, what was anticipated, riots because people won't have food. Uh, that was what, what, what was initially anticipated. And, and, and police were preparing for that sort of reaction from uh, communities in South Africa. 
But Alhamdulillah, uh, because of people's generosity, people getting food, uh, uh, there wasn't, we didn't see that, that sort of tension. But again, Muslim communities came out in thousands, making sure that people get fed daily, people get their um, uh, uh, hampers for food to see to their monthly grocery needs. And we saw uh, this past Ramadan, we saw uh, generosity uh, at a total different level, uh, something that we don't normally witness because a lot of our drives are aimed at uh, uh, distributing zakat in it internationally, but that zakat was distributed in South Africa, and our South Africans were able to get involved in the distribution. That is really a blessing, and um, I, I must say that I enjoy talking to you, Brother Yasin, and your experience and your words of advice will definitely motivate people, viewers worldwide, on the generosity of the people of South Africa and the kind of um, humanitarian services that you all offer. Listen, that is a blessing. And, and that's one of the reasons why we do this show. And that's why we want to talk to people like you um, so that you can motivate other people. Other people looking at the generosities of South Africans, the Muslim community, and as you said, the Muslim community movement uh, in, in helping other people. That, that is very powerful. That's powerful. And credit needs to be given where it's due. And I'm sure that will motivate our viewers worldwide, those people who can donate and support and they don't, they'll be motivated to do it. People with skills like yourself will get up and try to help towards projects and social services. So again, we have gone beyond our time because talking to someone like you and the kind of services you guys offer there, we have gone beyond our time. But I want to thank you very much, very, very much, brother Yasin Thiba, for being with us on the show, Global Issues on Al Hikma TV, and for sharing your experience and the services that you all offer. Exactly. Thank you for the opportunity and inshallah we hope to chat soon and um, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, chatting with you. Thank you very much. And to our viewers out there, thank you for viewing Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV. It has always been a pleasure to bring these programs and these shows to you so that you can benefit, we can benefit. So always stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Until then, thank you very much and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high-quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi indo pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani and many many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-4676. 3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com.